to do this, uh, James, d- there's got to be somebody that pissed you off, right? I mean, to do this, there's got to be somebody that either offended you or, uh, uh, you know, because I looked at your parents, they were conservative, but not at the levels that you are. You know, I, I kind of saw what their beliefs were. They, were. they were leaning right as well. But did somebody offend you? Did somebody upset you? You used to be a writer at your school, and then you went and decided to start your own paper instead of write. I think it was called Centurion. Yes. I, I don't know what it was. Maybe yes, it was called right. Centurion. Right. So, so it's not like, you know, what was the one event? I mean, maybe even we can go back to high school. If you and I were sure. in 10th grade, 11th grade, who, who was James O'Keefe? That's a great question. Um, uh I can answer it in two different ways by talking about that. But I think as a teenager, I remember being young, young man, and, and certainly in college, I read, the, I was very fascinated by journalism. I would read the newspaper every day, New York Times. I, I, I love, and Star Ledger, I'm from New Jersey, so that's, I don't even know. In 10th grade, you were reading the New York Times? I mean, he went to Rutgers, so this guy's okay. been- in, in, Well, in college particularly, yeah. I was obsessed with reading the newspaper. Now, this is 20 years ago, and or 19 years ago, and these newspapers have become a shell of themselves. They're basically like, you know, an exoskeleton. They throw AP articles in there. But the star, they, they provided a free copy in college uh, at Rutgers Public University, New Jersey, of the Star Ledger U.S. Today New York Times. I would sit there in the dining hall every morning because I was a shy, introverted kid, and I had no friends my freshman year. And I would read front to back all those three papers. And I considered that my education. I was a philosophy major, but... I, would, I, was, I was religious about reading the news and I was fascinated by it. And as a teenager, I don't know, maybe 13, 14 years old, I would, I would watch local news. So I grew up in the New York City suburbs of New Jersey and I would watch the, 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 the broadcast and just, I just felt intuitively that how they were portraying things were not as things were. So things were not portrayed as they were and rarely as they ought to be. And that's the best way I can describe it. It's just sort of a, a and, and I know everyone knows what I'm talking about because now it's self-evident. The news is not showing you how things actually are. They're describing reality and it affected me. I remember, I remember it affecting me and I didn't know I was ever going to do anything about it. I didn't, I didn't think that I'm going to be a journalist. I didn't even know, frankly, what a journalist was or what a journalist did. And I certainly had no inclination of going to journalism school. Um, and I was in Boy Scouts. I was a, a, an Eagle Scout, actually. And when I was about 18 years old, they had this board of review conference where you go before your scout master. And they asked me, what do you want to do with your life? And I went on this rant about things because <laughs> I was trying to look for guidance. And, uh, and he said, and I, and I said, things are not what they seem and, and, and rarely as they should be. And he said, have you ever thought about going into journalism? And that was the first time anybody ever said that to me. And I, and I thought about that and I didn't know what it meant to be a journalist. And then I went to college and I read these papers every day and I was literally reading the New York Times front to back and I got angry at the New York Times. I said, that's not right. That doesn't seem, you know, this is right after 9-11 and, and the world events that were happening and the op-ed pages. So I decided to um, uh, uh, write a column for what was the Daily Rutgers newspaper, the Daily Targum it was called. And I wrote a column and I started, and, I, and then I researched how my, the ratio of Democrats to Republicans of the professors at the university. And the ratio was 104 to one, the imbalance of it. And the mm-hmm. imbalance of it affected me too. And I said, well, that's not right. There should be more ideological balance among the faculty. And, and then we can talk more about what happened next. But that was the, the initial origins. Of so, my so the reason why I asked that is, you know, Adam, you know, he's... Uh, been a comedian before, and then from there he went into business and has done well for himself. You know, when you think about comedians, you'll typically, the DNA of a comedian is a what? Somebody that maybe lived a rough life, so humor was a way of, you know, just, what's the word? Just way to kinda, cope or way to deal way to with, cope with yeah, it. Exactly. Yeah, so a lot, it's of, a lot of comedians have dealt with issues. And oh, they, and tremendous, this, yeah, of course. right? Yeah, so then you, you think about like UFC fighters, like GSP or some of these other guys. Mm-hmm. They're lineage to wanting to become great fighters was what? They were bullied as a kid, so there was right. a form of, them being bullied, bodybuilders, same thing. What, what, did somebody piss you off? Did somebody bully you? <laughs> yeah. Did somebody, did you live a rough life? Did you see somebody right in front of your eyes betray somebody and lie and they went to jail or something happened to yeah. them where you said, I just don't think this is right? Good question. I, it reminds me of a question, I think it was Candace Owens asked me, what happened to you? Or maybe it wasn't her, but someone said something, mm-hmm. someone did something. Why does that question keep popping up though, James? No, it's actually only the second time I've been asked the question and, I, and I'm not a psychologist, I, 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 but I, let me attempt to answer it. Um, the only thing I can say about my childhood 
before this teenager watching local, you know, Fox 5 New York News was I, my grandfather and father, I was raised, I did have an unusual upbringing in the sense that I, I was doing property maintenance with my, my father and grandfather. I'm the third, James O'Keefe the third. My grandfather um, would, would wake me up in the morning and we'd go do what work on the houses every morning, paint and, and landscape and do roofing and plumbing work. And I guess it, it was looking back, it was like kind of like a, a, a child uh, a slave labor. I don't resent it. I think it's it's it, it was formative and taught me values and hard work. But I did not like the work. Um, I, I never took to it. Uh, uh, and the, we would work all weekend and every night during school. And and we we, you know, I told the story before. But since you asked. Um, uh, you know, that was very formative for me. It was a sort of indefatigability that my grandfather and father instilled in me, very tunnel vision. So we would work on these homes, doing everything ourselves. We didn't hire any labor. Um, and for years, starting at five years old, I would, I would do manual labor with my father and grandfather every weekend, dirty, disgusting work. And they didn't make small talk with me. Uh, my father never, never did. Um, I wanted to. Um, but we never made small talk. We just work, 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 work. And, and I hated doing the work. I, I, I did, it just detested it. I'm a very creative person. I always have felt that. And I would daydream during the work and I would think about other things, but I was forced to do this. So my only, and I'm not a psychologist, I'm speculating here, but I, I suppose that they instilled in me something I n didn't necessarily have when I was born, which is this tunnel visioned, almost maniacal drive Although they gave me that, but my my passion was different than, you know, you know, PVC pipes and 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 uh, roofing. My my passion was re, was exposing and artistic. So when you combine those two things, but I don't. No one ever really pissed me off. It was more just the hard work that I did that I guess instilled in me. So if you enjoyed this little short segment from the podcast that we did, here's another short segment to watch. Or if you want to see the entire podcast, click over here. Take care, everybody. Bye bye.